Hey YouTube, Travis here with Nostalgic Duelist. I'm here to give you a review on Saga of Blue Eyes White Dragon. So now what this entails, it comes with a manual and a pretty much a layout of the deck itself, what it entails. The manual is very helpful for people who are new to the game or want to get certain things clarified. Now this is also really good because not only does it tell you what the cards in this structure deck are, but it gives you a little cheat sheet on how to use certain cards to bring out the maximum potential in the structure deck. Or if you decide to expand on this structure deck, then on pretty much, yeah, just tailor just towards this specific structure deck. So it's really good. They're both really good to have. It also comes with a field. It has a Zora on one side and blue eyes on the other. In the middle, it has a saga of blue eyes white dragon structure deck. So very good to have. Now I'm going to go ahead and start this from the bottom and go straight up. Alright. Champion's Vigilance. This card is, says if you control a level 7 or higher normal monster, if you control that, when a normal or when a monster would be summoned or a spell or trap card is activated, negate the summon or activation and if you do, destroy the card. The only problem is you have to have a level 7 or higher monster, normal monster as a matter of fact, to even have this remotely be any good. So, would that be any good? I really don't know. But let's continue with the other cards. Alright, our next one is Compulsory Evacuation Device. This is always good to have in a deck because it targets one monster in the field and returns it to the person's hand. Very good. If you have an XYZ on the field, it's extremely good because you can, you can use this, get rid of that XYZ, because it doesn't return back to the hand, it returns back to the extra deck. And all the materials that were used for that card are automatically destroyed. So it's very good to have. Alright, Call of the Haunted, I recommend this for any deck. Because since cards like Monster Reborn, Premature Burrow, since all of those are destroyed, the only cards left that can reborn monsters could be like Foolish Burial. But, or also these cards, Call of the Haunted, and same, same as the such. Can't really name a lot of cards because the majority of them are banned. But this card is really good. Basically what this card states that you can activate it, revive a monster from the graveyard, special summon it, and if it gets destroyed, it's destroyed. Alright, Damage Condenser. Now this card looks like it's pretty cool. The art design is unique. But the effect is probably what makes this card really good. When you take battle damage, discard one card, special summon one monster from your deck with an attack less than or equal to the battle damage you took in face up attack position. If you can get major battle damage, you can bring out ex some pretty powerful cards. So just keep that in mind. Kunai with Chain, I actually have this in one of my decks or maybe a couple of them because they're very good to have. This is a very unique trap card, and I'll tell you why it's really good. It has two effects, and and unlike most trap cards, you can't use two or three or four effects. You can only use one out of them. In this case, you can actually use one or both of these simultaneously. What this card entails is that, basically, you can transfer a monster from attack to defense and increase the monster you equip it to by 500. It's very good. I recommend a card to have in a deck because it can save your skin. Now our next card is Phoenix Chain. And Phoenix Chain, this is a very old card as well. And this card basically says activate this card by targeting one effect monster on the field. Its effects are negated, also it cannot attack, and when it is destroyed, destroy this card. So it's really good to have on the, on the field to protect you because monsters nowadays are nothing but effects so this can really help you this is like a nightmare wheel spellbinding circle any of those kind of cards very good to have and the last card of the, well the last trap card of this whole 
structure deck is Castle of Dragon Souls. Now, when I heard this card was extremely good and it's pretty powerful, it states that once per turn you can banish one dragon type monster from your graveyard, then target one monster you control, it gains 700 attack until the end phase, even after this card leaves the field or the monster becomes unaffected by, by card effects. When this face up card on the field is sent to the graveyard, you can target one of your banished dragon type monsters, special summon that target. You can only act you can only control one castle of dragon souls. It's a very good card to have. Basically, it banishes the card, it removes it from the graveyard, and the card will stay on the field until it gets destroyed. When the card gets destroyed, that card you just that you removed from play comes straight to the field, so it skips that whole it skips the graveyard and comes straight to your straight to the field to do some real damage. Now, for my spell cards, let's start this from the bottom up. I'm just switching them up a little bit. There we go. Alright, Enemy Controller. It's a very unique card. I like it. It's a very good quick, sp quick play spell. And what it entails is basically you target one, if one monster on the opponent that your opponent controls and change the battle position of that monster and or you can tribute monster then target one face of monster your opponent controls and take control of it to the end phase so it's really good for taking over and maybe sacrificing so you can get rid of it recommend this card to its grave swords of revealing light is a very good card basically excuse me basically what this card does is that it stalls your opponent from attacking for three whole turns. So this can really help you. If you're in a fickle and you're about to either lose a duel or can't complete a strategy because your because your opponent has the upper hand, you can use this card as long as they have nothing to stop the card from being activated and continuing its effect. You have three turns to try to come up with something that will help you. So usually those three turns can really change a duel too. So keep that in mind. Soul Exchange I do recommend as well. For a deck, not one because it's a nostalgic card, and two because the effect is awesome. The effect of Soul Exchange entails that you can use one of your monsters. Well, if you had to tribute one monster to summon a stronger one, you can activate this card, and instead of using your monster, you use your opponent's monster. So you can easily summon that strong monster with your opponent as with your opponent's monster as material. It's pretty good. Dragonic Tactics, it looks cool. It looks like a chess set. And what, is, what it entails is that tribute two dragon type monsters. Special summon one level 8 monster, dragon type monster, of course, from your deck. Very good to get blue eyes out. Monster Reborn, I wish, wish that, you can, that we can use these cards. It's banned, but it's a really good card. It states that you can basically special summon any monster from the either person's graveyard. Basically revive any monster you want. One for one. Now I heard that this was a really good card and it states that send one monster from your hand to the graveyard and special summon one, mo one level one monster from your hand or deck. It's very good again for synchro summoners because if you have that level one synchro or any of the such, it'd be really good to have this. White Elephant's Gift is a pretty good card. Basically it just says to send one face-up non-effect monster you control to the graveyard and draw two cards. Again, that's trying to get cards out. Cards of Consonance, very good card too. Basically it says to discard one Dragon-type Tuner monster with a thousand or less attack and draw two cards. Again, this deck is tailoring you to try to get those cards out. Trade in. It's a pretty decent card. Discard one level eight monster and draw two cards. As you can kind of see a pattern there, all of them are about drawing, drawing, drawing. Because a lot of the tournaments nowadays entail of trying to get those cards out as quickly as possible. The Wing Beat of Giant Dragon is a very good card. The only problem is it's a double edged sword. 
because its effect is good and bad. What it basically says is that you can return one level 5 or higher dragon type monster that you control and if you do that then you can destroy all magic and traps on the field. So it's good to have but I wouldn't recommend having it in a deck. Stampeding Destruction I recommend having for those who are dragon users. Reason being is because Stampeding Destruction only works if you control a dragon type monster. If you do, then you can target a spell or trap card on the field and destroy it. And if you also do that, then you, get, then you give your opponent 500 points of damage. If you, man if you cannot manage to do light point damage to your opponent, this is a really good way to get quick, point, quick light point damage, as I like to call it. Burst Stream of Destruction. Very nostalgic card. It's a very good card. And if you control a blue eyes, you can use it, destroy all monsters on the field. The only thing is, you can't attack for the rest of that turn. Silver Cry. I heard this card was an amazing card. Basically, what this card entails is that you can target one dragon normal type monster in your graveyard and special summon that target. But you can only use the card of you can only use Silver Cry's effect once per turn. It's also a quick play spell card, so it's really good. Like if someone's going to attack you and do damage, you can activate this card, use its effect, all while in that turn summon Blue Eyes out, and possibly just saved you that turn or that duel. So very good to have. All right, now for the home stretch, I'm not going to show you the the holograms or the ultras yet. But let's keep going here. So again, I'm just shuffling them, just reverting them in reverse order so that I can show you, and they'll be in chronological order by the end. All right, now there are two of these, so I'm going to put one of them down. But what the first, what these both entail, these are really good cards, by the way, to have if you're trying to X, Y, Z, or trying to get certain cards out. And in this case, this is really good for this deck, and for any of those decks, like Mystic Tomato, I can't think of the fly's name, there's a fly card that has the same, like, Kawajaki or Kawazaki or something like that. But what those, what all of these types of cards entail, is that if these cards were to be destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you could special summon one monster with 1500 or less attack and special summon it on the field. Now, of course, all of them have different types of abilities, but to all of the, but to all, they have similar abilities at the same time. Now, Honest, from what I heard, I heard it was honestly a really good card. And I really don't know about the effect of the card, but from what I heard, it's an extremely good card. So I'll tell you more about these later. Kaiser Seahorse, I highly recommend to have. Highly recommend. Reason why I highly recommend, because this card, like Unshaven Angler, for any water type users out there, Kaiser Seahorse has an amazing ability. The only thing is, certain cards of the same magnitude require sometimes require a specific type of monster. In this case, this specifies that it wants a light type monster. But, these cards are treated as two monster materials. So if you try to summon a blue eyes white dragon, you need two cards to summon it. But you can use this card or another card in here, which I'll tell you about later. But you can use this card because his effect states that he is treated as two tributes. Tributes, materials, sacrifices, whatever you may call it. it would this acts as the two monsters that are re normally required. So they're really good to have. Herald of Creation is a very good card to have. The reason why I state that is because once per turn, you can discard one card, then target one level or seven higher monster in your graveyard and add that target to your hand. Again, all about getting cards. It's a very good card to have. Alright, now do you remember with Kaiser Seahorse how, how I was saying that this that Kaiser Seahorse along with another type of card in this deck that would be really good for getting cards like Blue Eyes out? Well, Kyber Man is another one of those cards. And quite frankly, I have not seen any other card like it. Now if if I if 
If I am mistaken and there is another type of card, please put that in the comments below. Comment me and tell me there is another card out there like Kaiba Man that can summon a specific type of monster. If you have it in a video, give me the link to that video and I'll watch it. But with Kaiba Man, it's a very nostalgic card too. What this card does, although it lacks in stats, it makes well, it does more than make up for its effect. Pretty much you can tribute this card for a blue eyes. That's it. Just this card for a blue eyes. So it's really good. The White Stone of Legend. This card, from what I heard, is an extremely good card. It can really help people a lot. And the reason why it does, one, it's a tuner. So it can help with synchro monsters. Two, because its effect is extremely good. It states that when this card is sent from the graveyard, add one blue eyes white dragon from your deck to your hand. That's a awesome way to win a duel. It's an awesome way to get those cards out quick as well. Very good card to have. I highly recommend it. Now, Divine Dragon Apocalypse. This card is pretty good, but it's kind of like the White Stone, which states that once per turn you can t discard one card, then target one dragon type monster in your graveyard and add that target to your hand. Doesn't have very good stats, but again, what it lacks, it will makes up for in effect. Mirage Dragon. I recommend it for any deck because its effect states that your opponent cannot activate trap cards during the battle phase. And a lot of the cards that we activate are, of course, during the battle phase. Magical Cylinder, Negate Attack, any of those kind of cards. Mirror Force, all during battle phase. With this card, you can't do that. It stops it. So very good card to have I recommend it now the heretic dragon cards these heretic cards I don't know too much about therefore I'm gonna pretty much skip over it but the art design looks pretty cool it has 2100 attack 14 defense and it's a level 6 so it looks pretty good I don't know too much about the effect though so I'm not gonna go into detail with it Kaiser glider it's a very nostalgic card I love the card it's really good and the reason why I say it's really good is because, not because of its attack, it's a pretty decent attack, but the effect, it cannot be destroyed. If, with, if this card was battling another monster with the same attack, this card cannot be destroyed by battle. But if this card was to be destroyed by any chance, either by card effect, magic, or trap, you could target a monster, one monster on the field, and return it to their hand. So if this card, if say this card was battling in X Y Z, which are black cards, and well they'll be colored in black. But if this was battling in X Y Z with twenty four hundred, that card would be destroyed, and this card would still stay because in the rule of Yu-Gi-Oh, the Gordon rule, is if cards that attack each other are of the same attack, they're both destroyed. But because of its effect. He's not going to be destroyed, but the other card will. But if by any chance, if the card was higher, like 2,500 or higher, and destroys this card, then the effect is I can return the XYZ back to the hand. But because XYZs are not from the hand, they go back to the extra deck, and therefore the monsters that were used to help summon it are automatically destroyed. So they're very good. I recommend this card. I highly, re well, I don't highly, I really do like to say I recommend this card greatly. So, Dark Storm Dragon, it's a very good card, has nice stats. Stars, yeah, it's a little high. Has eight stars, a little high, but it's really good. The effect states that this card is, a, is treated as a normal monster while faced up on the field or in the graveyard. But while this card is face up on the field, you can normal summon it to have it become an effect monster with this effect. Basically, what that was just saying is that this card is treated as normal, regardless. But if you want to, you can treat this as an effect monster. And the effect states that once per turn, you can send one face up spell or trap card that you control to the graveyard, and if you do, destroy all spell and trap cards on the field. Again, it's a gamble, but it's a very good card. If you have junk cards for magic and traps, and you're like, shoot, I just made a mistake by putting this down, I can't correct it now, use this effect, 
activate the card, use its effect, goes to the graveyard, and guess what happened? Bam! All your mistakes are corrected. Or, in the opposite hand, on the opposite side of the coin, if you had really good cards and you activated this, well, you're not so lucky. You're up the creek without a paddle. But, now as we continue, we have Rider of the Storm Winds, which, I don't know too much about this card. It is a tuner card. It is a one-star. So it could help you with Synchro Monsters. But from what I hear, this card is pretty decent. Again, I don't know too much about this card. I'll let you guys know about it later. Flame Veil Guard, very good card to have. It's 2,000 defense, and it's a tuner. So it can definitely survive a turn or two. Luster Dragon, Nostalgic, very good. I like it. Nowadays, I don't know if I'll recommend it, but it's a pretty good card to always have nonetheless. Alexandra Dragon, I do recommend this because of attack as 2,000, so it can, it can withstand a hit or two, or do some damage for maybe a few turns. And Raby Dragon, never seen this card before. It looks like an abomination from the picture, because it looks like it's a mixture of different types of dragons. It's a very high level card, and at the level 8, and it's one of those, as I call, odd cards. The reason why I call them odd is because they have the 50 point. But nonetheless, it's still a very good card that has very high stats, 2950 for attack and 29 defense. That's pretty good. So nonetheless, it's still a good card. Now going to as some might consider the promos for this structure deck. Alright, we're going to start from the very bottom of this and Dragon Shrine. As you can see, this has some nice holograph to it. Dragon Shrine, I heard, is a decent card. And what it entails is that send one dragon type monster from your deck to the graveyard. Then, if that monster in your graveyard is a dragon type normal monster, you can send one more dragon type monster from your deck to the graveyard. You can only activate this once per turn. The reason why I consider this to be a somewhat good card is because what if you have a card that you just absolutely cannot get rid of? You don't like it and it's useless. Send a card to the graveyard. If that was a normal dragon type, you can get rid of that card. Worries are free. You are you're relieved of that burden. So, it's a pretty decent card. Now, a lot of people have rumors about this card stating that it's a, as Zach and I say, it's a very broken card. And what I mean by broken is that a lot of people say either it's crap, decent, average, good, very good, OP, and broken. All those levels are really entirely on the card itself. And it's not because it's not classified just by the card or the effect or the stats of it. It's entirely affected the entire that whole categorization of certain cards are solely on the way the card is used. Maiden with Eyes of Blue is a very broken card. And the reason why I say it's broken, it's a nice holograph by the way. But the reason why I say it's broken, because its effect is just overwhelming. What this effect does for this card is that basically if you use a card effect. Oh, by the way, it cannot be, it can't be destroyed at all by battle. Because the effect says here, sorry if I'm like zooming in and zooming out on this card. But it states that when this card is targeted for an attack, you can negate the attack. And if you do, change the battle position of this card. Then you can special summon one blue eyes white dragon from your hand, deck, or graveyard during either player's turn when a card or card of, when a card or effect is activated that targets this face up card except during damage step, of course. You can special summon one blue eyes white dragon from your hand, deck, or graveyard. You can use maiden with eyes of blue effect once per turn only and only once that turn so it's saying you can use the maiden with eyes of blue effect per turn but it can only be once 
So that is saying is that sometimes cards say that once per turn, and then some people say, oh, well, either player's turn or once per turn and your opponent's turn. This is saying, it's pretty much saying on either person's turn, either duelist's turn, but you can only use it once. So if you use it once on his turn, you can't use it on your turn. But it could be good. Reason, and that's the reason why it's broken because if you attack this card it can negate it by just going into defense or vice versa and special summon a blue eyes which is 3000 attack automatically on the field can't destroy it by can't destroy it by card effect well if you could but if you just if you activate a magic or trap card or even a monster effect she could special summon a blue eyes so either way, this card is really broken. I highly recommend it for this for if you're making a blue eyes deck. All right, now for the moment of truth here, the Azor Eyes Silver Dragon. Very, from what I heard, it's a very very good card. It has 2,500 attack and 3,000 defense. I don't know why they reversed it, but it's a pretty good card. It looks cool. The holograph just makes it look all oh, so amazing. The the title is in gold. The effect states that. Now, of course, with Synchro Monsters, you need cards like Tuner cards. She is a Tuner card. And such others like her. But it requires one Tuner and one or more non-Tuner Dragon. No, one or non-Tuner Normal Monster. Sorry about that. What this card entails is that when this card is special summoned, Dragon type monsters you currently control cannot be targeted or destroyed by card effects until the end of the next turn. Once per turn, during your standby phase, you can target one normal monster in your graveyard and special summon that target. What that was just saying is that this card, once it's summoned, you can't do anything. You cannot activate monster effects. You can't activate magic or trap cards until the next turn. Actually, until the third turn, pretty much. Your third turn. Can't activate it now. Can't activate it on your second turn. Your third turn is the only time you can use it. Use any card effect. So it's very good. And it protects all your dragons, too. Even better. And special summons normal monsters from your graveyard. That card is overpowered. Now, the moment of truth as well, Blue Eyes White Dragon. This is the alternate version of the original Blue Eyes. I do have the original. And now we'll be doing a binder video soon. I have to go through my book and just empty out all the cards and put them in order. But, oh my gosh. This Blue Eyes, I've been looking for this one. It's pretty cool. And has 3,000 attack and 2,500 defense. Very good. Now, this deck is tailored solely towards these three cards. Reason stated being, Elephant's Gift, One for One, all of those cards, discarding cards, drawing two cards, all trying to get these three cards on the field. Well, not all of them, but this card, trying to get this card on the field and this card. Very good. But yep, so far, that is the... That is the... Sorry about that. I just had a sneeze. It just didn't go away. This is the review of Saga of Blue Eyes White Dragon. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned something about this because there were some cards in here that I even I didn't know what they did. Honest, honestly... I'm not going to read that card because the effect was like forever and a day. But I'm going to be making videos if you guys are like, well, what does that card do? How does this help me? How, why would you recommend this card to me? Or why would you not recommend this card to me? These cards, there are certain ones in here that I said I highly recommend. I more likely will guarantee you to rec recommend to you or I would recommend. Difference between the three you're probably confused with the difference between the threes. When I say highly, I mean this card needs to be in a deck. When I say I really recommend, it means 
it's a choice. You can or if you want to. You don't have to. And recommend means it's solely up to you. I just say thumbs up to the card, but it's solely up to you. So, yep, this is Travis with Nostalgic Duels. I hope you guys have a nice day. And Blue Eyes, man. This card is amazing. So many variations, like like the cards before it. But yep, I will be doing a I will be doing like a little video about cards that are conf that sound like they're confusing. So I'll help to simplify it for you and show the strategies and how they could be useful in the future. That's again if you guys want me to post them or if you want me to do the videos. So hope you guys have a nice day and. Enjoy the rest of your day. This is Travis with Nostalgic Duelist. See you guys later.